Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Tuesday, November 11, 2008. This morning I'd like to go through another widget, the menu button, and we'll just come over here and drop this down on our canvas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things. First we'll go through the properties, and then I'll go through dynamically building a menu, because for menu buttons that's frequently the way you do things. So let's take a look at the properties. You can put a string on it. Now normally you leave this blank because typically what you do is you leave no selection or you set the default selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the aspect, so menu, pick, and then you would put in a menu. So I'm going to put in my menu and then you put in the ID. And the other properties are all pretty basic. They go along with everything else. So you have these properties, you have the position, fly by help, you have validation notification, color, and whether it's a drop target. So nothing terribly unexpected there. Main things you need to fill out are these down here, and again, a string if you want that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit install, then I'm going to hit define. So now let's go ahead and browse this, and we'll take a look at the code we've got. So you find you've got menu pick as an aspect, and what you want to do is you want to define the menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to define a new variable. Now I don't need to do it this way. If I have this as a class option, I don't need to have a variable. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now I'm going to create an initialize release category. And I'm going to create an initialize method. Now in here, since I'm in an application model, I'm going to do a super initialize. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this while I write the code and then I'll come back to this. So here's the code. I create a new instance of menu builder and then I just add to it these things. So what this is is an association. String, value, string, value. So all I have here is the string and the value I want to assign to it. And then I just, to grab this, I send menu to the menu builder instance. And then I send as value to that to create a value holder. Now there's one other thing I need to do. Let's go to aspects or accessing, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to add this because whenever I ask for this guy, I need to have an accessor that will return it because the GUI builder will expect that. So having done that, I can now come down here to this and I can do an open and you should see a menu that operates and I can select option one, and I can select option two when I'm showing them and if I were to inspect the result, I'd see that those are set. So let me just show you that real quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do my UI open and I'm going to inspect the result. So I have my instance of the thing here. I'm going to select option two and now I'm going to dive in here and go down to the instance. I have the menu there and then I have my value which is what I was select. Then I have menu pick rather. I've forgotten how many things I have on this canvas. Notice I've got option two set. Let's go ahead and select option one. Now it won't refresh automatically, but I'll unselect and select. You notice it's picked option one. Now if I had wanted to have this thing fire that method instead of just saving it, I could take the symbol I saved and I could then just perform it. The other thing to keep in mind is I can put anything I want as the value. I could put blocks of code there to run. I could put symbols or something I want to perform. Or I can just put values like integers or strings that are useful to some other part of my application. So that's pretty much it for today. We've gone through the menu builder and we've gone through the menu button, seen how to dynamically create a menu and how to use it. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.